Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. I'm going to let this play out. Go ahead, guys. Get, have fun. Okay, everybody feel better now? Finish him. There you go. That's the finisher right there. <laughs> We're doing a video game episode, guys. We're talking our favorite video game of all time. Um, in fact, we have... Uh, we're doing even the main event's a little bit different today. Just a yeah, little bit. Just slightly. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought that would, that would kind of flip it. Um, Dub, very graciously, was like, you know what? You take the lead in this one. So I'm like... All right, why not? So I actually did research. So We're this is shock. your fault. This, yes, if everything is wrong, it's probably my fault. Even if it's right, it's probably my fault too. So mm, that's how that works. Yeah, yeah, but if everything is wrong, it's my fault. Well, but you know, we have three lives, so it's fine. <laughs> I did the Konami code, so I got thirty. So I was gonna say good. I got up, up, down, down, <laughs> and right? start. You said it wrong. That's oh, it. I, oh, wait, so up, I just and Bailey it. Up, up, <laughs> down, down, yeah. left, right, right, left, right, right, B, A, B, A start. B, A, B, A. So no, start. B, A, start. I just had to do it twice. I did That's because you had a faulty too. controller. Okay. I did it twice. I don't think it really mattered. I think you did it. You could do it twice, but it's actually B, A, start. You only need it once, yeah. Yes. Okay, today's episode is brought to you by getting mad when you have to be player two all the time just because you are younger. Everyone knows what I'm talking well, now, about. Now, why would one. I was never one. younger? I was an only <laughs> child, so no, I was always playing. Y'all are one. jerks. <laughs> why is, why? I had to be Luigi growing up. Oh, okay. <laughs> always. <laughs> okay, well, that one I can understand. But I'm like, why is Big Player Two? Who cares? Because Luigi. Luigi. Because okay. you're Luigi. So, so, so you're who's, Luigi. Who's your older sibling? I have two sisters. Two sisters. So, Wait, so, hold on. So, so, <laughs> so which one? So which one was always player one? Uh, Rochelle was always player one. Ah, thanks, Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I'm the oldest of my oldest brother, so I guess I was always player so, one. Yeah. So now I can't. You, you have no <laughs> idea what Luigi can do, do you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it literally is. It's like it's a uh, derogatory term to have to always be saying. Right. Like, I know my class in life. Okay. Well, at least you're not Toad. I liked Toad. I on, actually on, did on too. What, Super Mario Three, I think that was, or Mario Kart. Well, he was always good at Mario Kart too. No, Super two. Mario Two. Yeah, and you didn't have no choice because it was only a one player game. <laughs> yeah, no, I those were fun. I like actually Luigi was better on that because he could jump higher. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's let's talk about the freaking <laughs> yeah the panel. Um, I'm Dub and I'm your producer and um, I yeah. I'll get to more stuff later. <laughs> and you are, sir, the I, Black Geek. I'm Carl, the Black Geek, your video game extraordinaire. Wow. Wow. I said it. Wow, gauntlet thrown down. All well, right. I've been All talking right. to you like off mic and stuff about video game related subjects today, so I'm going to have to agree with <laughs> Carl in, on this one. Okay. And he is it. the video game extraordinaire. Sure, why That's, not? Oh, me and Kaj. We got twenty years history going back and yeah, forth. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> double back and forth. But I, I would, I would, I would bow down and say that yes, you did. Because gosh, when we were when we were living together with as roommates, like it was like you had every single system and N sixty four. Like the, you were spoiled. I'll give you guys this. No, he was just I actually <laughs> own um, almost every game system made back to the twenty six hundred. Nice. Mm-hmm. And most of them are still plugged in. <laughs> there you and go. Worked outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. Kaj definitely and dub to their to both of you guys video game more so than me for sure, but man that's that impressive. that's a level C- like connoisseur like <laughs> like video game connoisseur, just video game lover I guess you could say and and an admirer nice. an enthusiast yes and you are sir the guy I am talking. I am I am Kaj of the video game enthusiast, <laughs> <laughs> but Kaj how do you feel I feel. Leveled up. Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Done. This and, is this is sobering, people. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right, sir, I am PB and Jason. Um, I have a. I can't say I have a layman's knowledge of video games. It's more than that, but it's not connoisseur. It's not quite being able to quote documentaries like mm-hmm. Kaj does often. But as far as like being of an age where I got to see them, you know, the whole. Evil evolution. 80s video game things start and home consoles and all that. Uh, yeah, I guess I lived life yeah. during that time, so I have that knowledge. Nice. Um, you know what? Just because we haven't done this in like two years, and we, I've, I've noticed that we have about a thousand new listeners lately. 
What is PB? What is what is PB and Jason? Can you explain that real quick? Just so we haven't went over this in forever. Oh, okay. Well, um, we had a, an original panel that contained Jewel Sparks, mm-hmm. who is a friend of the show. And um, after our first show, uh, we did a, a, a ghost show that never made the air. And one of the ongoing jokes of that show was a lot of things about Lost. And I brought up the whole polar bear angle, mm-hmm. polar bear, having a polar bear as a pet. They'd make great dogs. You know, because no one would ever mess with you if you went walking. <laughs> and so the, the running gag, it was our very first ever running gag. Mm-hmm. And then um, in a text conversation with her, she, she wrote um, different names and then she wrote in PB and Jason. And I was like, what is that? She's like, polar bear and Jason. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> and I- so, so PB and Jason stuck and I decided to use it as... Pretty much every name that represents my art, I guess. I thought it was Pixel Fit and JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's Julie. A gif. So Jewel Sparks, I give credit for it's the. A gif. It's not a GIF. I give credit for the idea which I ran with. Yeah, nice. Polar bear. Plus, I'm big, white, and hairy. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of fits, just, too. We haven't done that forever, so. Yeah, no, sometimes I, he puts on armor. I said next to him, I didn't know. So. <laughs> yeah, you're. You've been you've been following us since. Pretty close to the beginning. Yeah, I just yeah, it's, that's for some reason I missed it. The beginning, it just okay. Everybody gets it. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of new people. So just kind of wanted to throw out some inside jokes. And as my hair is whitened, it's it's really fitting. It <laughs> so, yeah. really, really yeah. is. And then when he does it, when he does his bear growl, is like, <laughs> and I don't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so we're gonna go right into. Um, uh, kind of our first segment, I was going to do music, but all the music for research literally has Winchester's name in it. So we're not doing that today, but we're still doing kind of a research segment. Too soon. It's not a bad thing. He'll be back eventually. Yeah, I know. But I we, have, so. we have Kaj being Mr. Winchester and kind of, kind of tell us, give us a little research on the history of video games. We're all going to chime in, but... All right, so the history of it. <laughs> oh, I, I can't do you, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just mention Ryan Reynolds' oh, man, ads I've, once. It, oh, oh. There you go. There you go. Okay, come out of it. So, like, the history of video games is a... All right, so um, I have a little bit of knowledge on this. I watch a lot of documentaries about how how video games really started and and the beginning of it. Like, it goes back... It dates back all the way to, like, the 1950s. And, like, students at MIT would secretly, like... There was, like, some underground uh, rooms and corridors down at MIT that they would actually have these big, huge, massive computers, like the PDP-1 or the IBM 1560. And they actually would program with punch cards like certain games mm-hmm. like it would either be a table tennis or as as one of them as one of them the most po- more popular ones was a uh, computer war or, or computer space mm-hmm. and um or is it, no space war i'm sorry because that you'll understand why in a minute so it was it was space war and then a uh, a very intelligent a student by the name of Nolan Bushnell was escorted into one of these rooms and saw Space War and was like, I bet you I can make this into like something that people could play at as as a as a video game, like like an arcade game. So he made computer space and put it into a couple of taverns and it really didn't didn't do as well as people would think because you would have to have a little bit of um, knowledge. knowledge of of vectors and 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 uh, physics and and geoforce mm-hmm. and stuff. So that really didn't that really didn't pan out. But he kept that idea going about video games and got um, uh, one of his friends Al Alcorn to make up this game of two plates that a ball would go back and forth and kind of ping and go go back and forth and go ping pong and pong was born from that puts it into another bar setting and then all of a sudden the the owner is calling up saying hey the the game is broken al goes down there and finds out the reason why it's broken is because there's so many quarters in the till it wow it tilted it stopped so he's like all right i can get used to this i've and, seen an original stand-up pong game yeah i mean and it, very basic but something easy, easy to learn hard to master yeah. you know yep. um so moving a little bit forward um so pong was said so um they they start they start making games uh with like a with the like a tank and even uh knockout and they kind of build up a reputation but then the funding starts to kind of go out and then all of a sudden they're like well we need some more we need an infuse of money Warner Brothers picks them up and then 
it's then things explode because then mm-hmm. they have marketing or what there's it goes from like being like a hundred thousand dollar corporation to like a million two million twenty million up to two billion dollars mm-hmm. in one year wow because they were just cranking out games left and right and they got a very massive uh group of talented um uh, computer programmers to make these games Unfortunately, as corporate settings do, um, they they started to more looking at the bottom line and how many cartridges they could pick out. Yes, I, I know. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, Warner Brothers kind of uh, wore them into the ground, wore their employees into the ground because they thought that they were no more better than the people that were on the assembly line. So the good creators were like, see ya. A lot of them went over and created Activision, which did Pitfall and and Racer, Drag Racer, and stuff like that. Um, and then, as as arguably, people are saying that ET showed up <laughs> because because of the movie they wanted to make it into a uh, uh, they wanted to have it as a Christmas special. And the uh, the programmer, um, gosh, I can't remember his name, uh, Howard something. Uh, he he's he says normally it takes about five months to make a a good quality solid game he did it in five weeks right Ooh. one one little thing you missed in your thing just to okay add it in there is you're speaking of the 26 atari 2600 yeah, the atari 2600 yes um it, it founders yes and, yeah. uh, and the, founder, the, the founders of atari and it yes, was in, and it was in the atari that they started treating them Poorly, and then they went to Activision. Absolutely. Yes? Okay. I apologize because I no, was no, assuming no, you good. guys knew that. No, no you're <laughs> fine. I just wanted to clarify. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. for a minute, my mind was on coin op games, and it's then a, it's like, oh wait, we're talking right, about Vision? Oh no, Atari. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so with that, um, that gave them a massive hit because the game was just so, so quickly bad. made and just so bad that kids were like. Uh, like crying and then their parents would ref- would go back to the store to like I want a refund of this and we filled the landfill with and, it and well it's so and then uh, and then the next step the next thing the next uh, notch in the belt was that um they got the rights for Pac-Man mm, and that's a big one and that was a big one too because they not only they were they were making a 40 megabyte game into a 4 megabyte game and it would flicker like the the ghost would flicker but and good. Yep, and it just it just didn't look like Pac Man. So no, it didn't. I remember being really disappointed <laughs> by like, the, like, and you were like turned backwards. Back. Yeah, and what I was like, like, this isn't Pac Man. What is this? As a, as a nickname, they called it Flicker Man because uh. because the ghost flickered. Um, and with that, they're like, oh, this is going to be such a great game. People are going to love this. They made a massive amount of more twenty six hundred um, uh, consoles to to keep up with the demand mm-hmm. but once once that one came back they had like hundreds of thousands of Atari 2600s that they couldn't get rid of right so that kind of sealed the deal put the final nail in the coffin for Atari and they've never really recovered from that it to the point where from like 83 82 83 to 85 video games were just nobody wanted to touch them nobody wanted mm-hmm. to deal with them and then comes a little uh, corporation called Nintendo. Yes. That in their brilliance, genius of brilliance, they, they, they go to New York and they're like, hey, look, we want to try to promote this system. And kind of kind of paraphrasing, like, is it a video game? They're like, oh, no, 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 it's not a video game. It's an entertainment system. It has a robot named Robbie. And they still it's use It's got a light terms. gun and it's a light gun. And yeah, it's not a video game system. It's an entertainment system. And... They slowly but surely brought back the video game craze, to which I would say even arguably Mario, Super Mario Brothers, brought like save save the video game. Industry. Yeah, because there Probably was a, the there was important. a mm-hmm. there was a gap of time between all the Atari machines, mm-hmm. and the Intellivision, the ColecoVision, and or and they, that war that went on for a while, and then there was nothing. And then, well, there and was then the like NES, people yeah. like people were just making games just to make games, and they're like there's a Chuck Wagon game. Like check wagon gravy, like for dog food, they have a they have an Atari really? twenty six hundred. Yes, yeah. I yeah. want to play it. Yeah, it's no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it, it it was, ow, that was my leg. Uh, um, it uh, yeah, it 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 got so bad and they just flooded the market that I mean you could go to Toys R Us and there was a ninety nine cent bin and you can buy like thirty games. I'll bet for, you the on the emulator there's a chuck wagon. <laughs> uh, so I, I will stop. Yes. I will stop the history on that because that's. I think that's where that's where we're all. That's where the, the fuse was lit to the rocket that it is the the uh, the video game industry, the multi billion dollar industry, which I think 
in the U.S. alone was $43 billion, and worldwide, it was over $100 billion. Wow. Nice. Just last year. Hmm. I'm in the wrong business. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go. Why do you think I'm doing voiceover? <laughs> to challenge you, business. <laughs> so let's go from that educational thing to the next educational thing. We have a game show. Here's a generic game show for you. On this version of the game show, we have Carl. The black geek is taking over because he would absolutely cream us, I think. So I said, why don't you do the questions because we're screwed otherwise. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, Kaj is going to win. Um, I don't know. I I'm do gonna not think second, so. <laughs> and Jason will probably get third. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he, I don't know. He he might he might have it. I don't know. No, and honestly, I don't know what anybody wrote. On oh, there's anything. a ton I'm of just these. Making a guess. There's a ton of these. I'm sure I get. Oh, we'll get wrong. So that's cool. But I'm okay. gonna have fun anyway. Uh, that that's and that's and really what that's it's all point. about. Having fun, everyone. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and winning. And, winning. <laughs> <laughs> and defeating Winning's your enemies. <laughs> Crushing your enemies. <laughs> To and, hear and the whales, <laughs> women. <laughs> to give a hearty Hadouken to whoever stands in my way. <laughs> Hadouken. Sorry, go ahead. So let's go ahead and start with our questions. Question number one, and we're going to go around. I'm going to start at Kaj with this and uh, roll it from there. In which year did Doom first release? 19... 19- Ninety. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to. Look, yeah, you guys can't see. I'm trying to look at his expression if I'm getting it right or not. <laughs> Two. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to say uh, no. Ah. Uh, PB, how about Nin- you? 1989. I'm gonna have to say no on that okay. one as well. 86. Can I say no on that one as well? Well, Kaj would have been nuggets. Kaj would have been the close one. It was released in 1993. Oh, oh I, I, you I were was, close. Very I was, good. I was. I didn't. I couldn't remember if it was 92 or 93. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Question number two: From Sonic the Hedgehog, what is Tails' actual name? I was never really a Sega person, but I know who Tails is. I didn't know that she had a a name. I put Tailina. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with no. <laughs> that but I got to laugh out of you. <laughs> um, Bob. I'm also going to have to say no okay. on that one. All right. It's Robert. I think I know this one. It's Monica Louise Hershenslaffel. I'm going to have to give a no on that one. <laughs> but I am going to bring in a special guest to see if they can answer okay. it for us. What do you have here, sir? Miles. That would be correct. All right. Miles Power. So Miles. Since, since I created that, do I get his points? That's I'm gonna say no. no. Oh. That's not a name. That's a distance of length. All right. <laughs> Good job. It actually, Dylan it actually is based that's, off of the distance and speed nice. that that character goes. And mm-hmm. that is, that's the first time that my, my youngest son has appeared on the show. Hey. That was Dylan. I'm sure he'll be on Dylan. as we go, as I make force my kids to be Anytime on. Anytime I can't be on, Dylan's taking my place. <laughs> Nice. The Good job, meat. Spawn of Dub. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. Who's the main character from Grand Theft Auto Vice City? Is it A, Tommy Verzetta, B, Michael De Santa, or C, Trevor Phillips? Kaj. I, if I remember right, it was Tommy Verzetta. That is correct. All right. I wrote Tommy Verzetta. That too is correct. I said B, whatever that was. Because <laughs> <laughs> isn't it in the title? Isn't it like the stories of Tommy Verzetta? I think it yes, is. Yeah. it is. <laughs> Phew. I can read. <laughs> it's okay, Dub. You can make a comeback. I can't. I really can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Number four is a two part question. Mm-hmm. Okay. Worth five points. Nice. So the question is, how many ghosts are there in the original Pac-Man game? Okay. And second part, name all four. Well, never mind. (laughs) Well, uh, (laughs) four. (laughs) So there was four ghosts, and if I'm not mistaken, their names are Inky, Mm -hmm. Blinky, Mm -hmm. Winky, and Clyde. No, it's not Winky. Nope. You got four out of that. I'll give the answer afterwards. uh, uh, Four. Okay. Um, I wrote Inky, Blinky, Stinky, and Clyde. Nope. Mm-mm. <laughs> so, this is the one so I know. What, what, so did, I, what did I get? You got did I get? four out of Okay, four out of that. Dub, foe, Inky, Blinky, 
Pinky yep. and Clyde. Or pinky, yep. Pinky, Perfect. Pinky. Yeah, pinky. dog. Because the only she's female ghost. Yeah. Because she's pink. She was on the cartoon. I know. Pinky. Ah. Very good. Good job, Dub. Thank you. I'm so happy I got Yeah, points. <laughs> <laughs> points. Uh, well, because of the points you got, you're all tied. Hey. Nice. That's not going to last long. See, <laughs> question number five. I made it that way. Which war is in the game Call of Duty 2? Mm. Cause. I, th- I think I'm going to change my answer. No. I- no. 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 The panel says no. <laughs> all right, then. World War II. That would be... Correct. Oh, good. Th- thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. World War Two. Also correct. The second champion of all wars. That's World a- War of the Two. <laughs> good job. I shouldn't make jokes about war, but yeah. yeah. Why not? Okay. Better than the next question I'm going to get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> question number six. What type of Pokemon is strong against Charmander? I will give you guys a hint in this. No, 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 all so that you guys know what you're looking for. Water base was the answer. Okay. okay. Squirtle. <laughs> Squirtle. Squirtle. Um, I wrote water type. I wrote Snorlax because I have no idea what Pokemon does. That is also a correct answer. That's awesome. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I, just, I got all excited for a second. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like Snorl. He's awesome. <laughs> My kids call me Snorlax. I know. That's why I knew it. <laughs> Dub, you're about to make a comeback. I know I got this one right. All right. What tell tells game is based on the Fables comic series? One of the top three comic books of all time. Hmm? Kaj. Um, so I I know pretty much a, a lot about Telltale games, and the only one that I haven't played that I would think it would be the only one that would be the correct answer is The Wolf Among Us. That is correct, sir. That's what happens when we sit and talk about the games in front of <laughs> they, you're like it's the greatest one. It's the greatest one out of the bunch. I'm like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> uh, I got it wrong. I wrote Fables Quest for the dot dot dot. <laughs> That's all. For I, the triple dot. <laughs> that is cr- no. <laughs> Sorry, sir. That's Unfortunately, okay. that is incorrect. Nope, that's correct. A uh, Wolf Rain Among Us, which is fantastic, by the way. If you want to, you can check out the comic book mini series. They well, series series they did. They I think it was like uh, forty issues. Fantastic, by the way. And it was a weekly thing that they put out, so you can well, get them in the um, graphic novel form. You can get um, them in a hard down graphic novel. Form. Yeah, nice. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Question number eight. Yeah. What is the best selling video game console of all time? Kaj. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go for the obvious one. I'm gonna go for the Super Famicom. That would be incorrect. <sighs> I am gonna go for the obvious one and say the original NES. That too would be incorrect. Okay. The Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Unfortunately, sir, uh, that is incorrect. The uh, best-selling video game console of all time, believe it or not, the PlayStation Two. Oh, really? no, I, I can, can believe that. it. I can see that. I can believe it. I should, you know, because they went on well. and they made games for that for years, even while there was a three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was the first time that they had online. You can actually play online with other players. Yeah. Multiplayer, so I should have yeah. thought of that. And mm. then people hacked them. <laughs> That's, yeah, that is kind of obvious. Nice. <laughs> Before Nintendo became a video game company, what type of company were they? Do I get an extra point if I actually know the exact thing of what they used to do? No, they used to be they used to be a playing card company, but it's not like a normal playing card like we know. It's it's a game called Hanafuna, which is there's it's it's almost like a match. You're trying to match um, like four or four to five combinations together, and then you get points from that. But it's called Hanafuna. And Kaj would be correct. Mm-hmm. Granted, Kaj knows that part because he just did the research for the yeah, show. No. <laughs> oh no 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 no. Well, there's an anime that they talk about that. Ah, there you go. I wrote game playing cards. I'll take it. I said playing cards. 
Excellent dub. Dun, 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 you do get a point. Dun, 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 dun. Hana, buna, hana. So I got to tell you, you guys are all pretty close. Kaj is only leading you by one question. Ooh, all right. Because I made it that way. Let's see. Is there anything else? Because you sure wrote it. On? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was Nintendo's Mario's original occupation? <sighs> Kaj. <laughs> Well, it like if I'm if I remember right, the the name Mario come from his landlord, <laughs> from the actual the guy's landlord. He actually named him Mario. Um, I'm just gonna go with the obvious. He was a plumber. That would be incorrect, sir. Mm. I'm gonna say he was an exterminator. That too would be incorrect. Sir. Okay, he was a plumber slash monkey killer. Mm. Wow, that's just poor monkey, <laughs> and he's a gorilla. <laughs> But that would be incorrect. Yeah. Dylan, do you know the answer? A coping tool. That would be carpenter? correct. Mm. A carpenter, okay. Wow, nice. how does my kid know more about this stuff than me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because he watches memes on YouTube. That's mm-hmm. why. This one has three answers to it. What? Mm. Well, listen to the question. Okay. In which rounds... Do the first three bonus stages appear in Galaga? Oh. Gosh. Level three, level six, level nine. You have one correct, but I will wait until everyone else answers to tell you which one it is. I know which one it is, but I didn't have the other three. PB? Round four, round eight, round 12. That would be incorrect in all of them. Sorry. I just guessed six. You just guessed one thing. I didn't. Catch All six it. levels. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that is unfortunately also incorrect. Is it three seven and, and okay? So seven was okay. Seven was right, and then probably twelve. Very close. Three seven and eleven. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Next one. If you're jumping from one cube to another, and those cubes change colors. What are you playing? I mean, Cubert. <laughs> Excellent. Cubert. Perfect. The Bert with the Q. Ah, I love it. Next one. What are the correct altitude and speed to land in the Nintendo Entertainment Center, uh, Systems version of Top Gun? You are a monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, I said. 205 miles an hour at 1,500 feet? That would be... (laughs) You're shooting way over. (laughs) I I just destroy the carrier. No, you're going to miss the carrier at your rate. No, no. Uh, 100 feet, 150 miles an hour. Fortunately, that is incorrect. You're going to crash right into the carrier. Okay. Nice. You have to go at ludicrous speed. I didn't have that. Ah, Nice. Really? That's really? good. I like that. I didn't know. It's actually on the screen if you're playing the game. Your altitude needs to be at 200. Your speed needs to be at 288. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So that's why I crashed all the time. Probably. Hmm. And in Arkham City, who was the mastermind behind Protocol 10? If I'm not mistaken, wasn't it Mr. Freeze? Unfortunately, you're incorrect, sir. Okay. I also said Mr. Freeze. You are also incorrect. Uh, Riddler? Unfortunately not. Before I go any further, are you guys aware of what Protocol 10 was in no, Arkham no. City? No. <laughs> yeah. I you, forgot. If you played Arkham City, Protocol 10 right. was the master plan of the overall story. Okay, so then it was the Joker. It was not. The mastermind behind Protocol 10 was Ra's al Ghul. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds like a If you remember, he was type. running behind Hugo Strange, and he was pulling the strings behind everything. Nice. Okay. And our last question that we have here is, what is the title of the 2002 Xbox-exclusive Superman game? I went, for the, I went for the fences and put the death and return of Superman. That is incorrect, sir. Mm. Superman Justice for All. I like the sound of that, but unfortunately they it's incorrect. <laughs> Superman, the quest to make money with Xbox because PlayStation didn't want it. You happen to be correct. No, unfortunately. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> it was as simple as you guys might not think. Superman, the Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was the first That's thing I wrote I down. Wrote. 
So why didn't you say it? I was trying to be funny. I didn't think it would possibly be that. <laughs> that's a, I'm going to give you no. a point for that. Oh, you wrote that's it. the first thing I wrote down, I'm too. I'm still losing. <laughs> I crossed it out. Oh, so, wow. point-wise, okay. we have Dub rolling in here at Last. 10 points. PB has 9 points. Okay, I'm I called it. Kaj has 11 points. Yeah. All right. I'm just proud that I called it. <laughs> Kaj, not only do you win, but you are officially dubbed as Ready Player One. Yes. <laughs> RPO, people. Good job, Kaj. Mm. Yay. <laughs> And I trust was that much wasn't rejoicing. too hard of questions. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> the second inter- time you've allowed me to do this. I think it's the last. <laughs> <laughs> I liked his other game show. I think <laughs> I won that won. one. When you won it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, um, let's discuss real quick what makes a video game feel timeless even as technology improves. Because, I mean, a lot of the games we're going to hit on our top whatever mm-hmm. is... They're older games, but they're still playable, even though the technology is a billion times better. What makes it a game say, yep, I don't care if this was on Atari, this still rocks. So I don't care if it's on NES, this still rocks. What makes them so good? Personal nostalgia. I, you know, I think you got a lot. You're saying a lot with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like if it conjures up a feeling and you can get like that. music. Yeah, and you can get that feeling to conjure up every time you play that game which happens for me mm-hmm. um that's what keeps it relevant i can agree i think for me generational wise it's story mm-hmm. it's a lot like watching a movie sometimes a lot of games have a really great story so you want to go back and relive that story right right i, can I would, see that I, I would even just say the difficulty because i mean even with today's with the modern video games now i mean it's it's all about cgi and kind of the graphics and you know the you know it the 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 basic it's flashy basic, yeah flat the basic formula of the game is there but like if you do something like a metroid or a castlevania i mean those were it's especially with t- Nintendo in the early years. I mean, there was a, there was a, a a term called Nintendo Hard, where it was ridiculously hard. <laughs> yeah, it, like Super Mario Two or Legend of Zelda Two or Castlevania Two. Those things were you had to be, you had to have a certain level of skill in order to complete the whole thing, mm-hmm. or you know, or have maps, you know, like map everything out. Um, I think. And even even with today's uh, standards, like uh, with uh, just speed running, just you know knowing the game so well that you're trying to get it f- completed as quickly as possible. Yeah, like that. I think that w- that will stand the test of time. That's yeah. I I agree with the difficulty thing. One of the things I tell my kids about it is, uh, you know, at what point in Super Mario can you save? And that answer is never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, uh, uh, the. The, the thing that defines it for me is when I was playing, especially as a kid, so kind of goes to the nostalgia thing, but at what video game do you feel like it's you that is playing as that character? Metroid, I always feel like I am Samus and I'm doing the jumping. Or, you know, I mean, a lot of these games. Super Mario, you can picture yourself being that running. There's games that don't quite reach that anymore where you don't, you didn't personally connect with it. That's interesting. And I think that's really, when you go back and listen, or mm. go back and watch it, when you played, did you f- picture that as you, or did you? was it just a character on a screen? Hmm. I never felt that, but it's sort of a an idea that's similar to that, is I love the old 80s coin-op games that you can now play on home consoles. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, that are exact replicas. The coolest thing for me is, you know, they're still hard, a lot of them. Yeah. And you could be like, that's a quarter I didn't drop. Mm-hmm. That's a quarter oh, I didn't yeah. drop. Oh, yeah. And you are like, I just played $25 worth of quarters in, you know, however long, and I didn't drop one, one quarter. quarter yeah. right? And it's such a great feeling. <laughs> Fair enough. That's pretty good, actually. Um, so let's move on just a touch. Um, what is our f- least and most favorite consoles of all time um we're, we're going to be talking a lot on the games themselves but the consoles themselves you know i will for instance i will always be an xbox guy more than a playstation guy because that's what i'm used to i 
yeah, I like the controller because I'm used to it. And so Xbox would be the one for me. And I know PlayStation is the number one for a lot of people. But let's look at some of these other consoles. What's the best and what's the worst? Do you have any opinions? Um, so, Mr. I have everything. Black yeah, yeah. I would have to say my, my favorite console to play of all time would be the Dreamcast, the Sega Dreamcast. Yes, really? It yes. is. Um, I, so I've, much potential that just wasn't and right. I, and I think that I see whereas me, I think it pushed the limit more than any system has, whereas systems now, they meet the limits for where we are. Yeah. Um, my least favorite is the virtual Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. A thing with the red and just uh gave people seizures. Yeah, yeah, I I get mad every time I pull a box it's out the color. and see it. Yeah, yeah. it the, was no the red. Yeah, that you're staring at. Oh, it, it was intense. horrible. Yeah, it's so, not okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. So that would be me. Uh, my my favorite console, uh, as you just said, the most popular one of all time, the PS2. Okay. Just for for its connectability, its multiplayer, the graphics were really good. There's like. Uh, Castlevania Seventy the Night, Final Fantasy Two, or Final okay. Fantasy Seven uh, came out for that. Um, no, that came out of the PS One, but then I played it on the PS Two because it was backward compatible. Anyway, um, but the worst uh, Virtual Boy is really good, but S- uh, Sega uh, Thirty Two X. Really? That's, yep. That's I, I don't think they, I don't think the library game. was big enough to even consider. It's, well, I mean, and they tried. To, well, they they just came out with the Sega Saturn, and then like, oh, well, we can we can plop this thing into your Sega Master System, and now you can run those 32x games. And I guess and, I, I guess I was on the field different because I ended up with my 32x before I got my Saturn, okay. and I had Star Wars. Right, right. Um, 32x. So, uh, you know, I can see it though. I can. Well, like, what was it? What was it? Death Trap or something? The one that that. Uh, that uh, yeah, I know what Alyssa Milano or somebody was into it. Like the video, the videos were horrible. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, for family, it's the Wii, hands down. Oh, I love the being Wii. able to do that. So that that you know, being able to do family fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, personal would be the Super Nintendo. I had I still mine still works and I have it hooked up. I actually just recently hooked it back up. Bought a bunch of games for it mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I just love everything about that system yeah uh my least favorite strangely enough is the intellivision uh, oh, be- because oh, wow. because um coming off of the 2600 um i so much wanted the intellivision and Didn't it was kind of really you know offers you don't a whole get, lot more <laughs> yeah you don't get the intellivision but then a friend of mine got the intellivision and okay. then playing it i hated just everything about it i hated the timing the control the paddles the paddles mm. everything and i'm like oh my god i wanted this and it sucks you know and I kind of still feel that way because I have the you know the emulators and I right. have the television emulator, and just the games I just can't get into them. And yeah. I could get into older you know games. Yeah, no. If but, you're ever gonna go back that way, you might as well go to the twenty six hundred or seventy seventy two hundred. But or the Commodore, yeah. you know, or those sort of things. Yeah. Nice Amiga. My, my two favorites would be the NES system, the original, and the N sixty four. I love the games on the N64. I like the controller. I like the way it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what was a really bad one, I don't know if you all remember this one, is the Neo Geo. Oh, yep. I remember <gasps> good games. Good games. Uh, not not a just really good oh, games. Though. I never connected with it for whatever really? reason. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you really quick the best benefit of the Neo Geo? Please. The Neo Geo had the memory card system that you can actually use the memory card in the arcade, in the Neo Geo arcade system. So you could take your memory card and go to, I remember doing it to ones that, that were in 7-Eleven, and you can place them in. They had a slot for them in the arcade, really? so you could use them there. So I, yeah, That's cool. sorry. That I is was a big cool. Neo Geo fan. Ooh, I yeah, was, I love about, the Neo Geo games. What about the Jaguar? The no. Atari Jaguar. That I wasn't a fan. I hated I'd, the Saturn too. I'd, it, if I feel so, I I don't know. If I feel I don't know how I feel about Atari because I loved Atari at the beginning, but then once they fell and they tried to, they fell hard. They, yeah, and they tried to kind of kind of rival people again, but they just they never did. No. Like to, like the seventy two hundred, the fifty six hundred, it was never better than like what the Nintendo Entertainment System was. No. Well, you know, a game that or a system that pissed me off because of. He actually, he actually met the fifty two hundred and the seventy eight hundred. Well, but, but, okay. but even but even selling so, like they were like, yes, yeah, look, these are better graphics. But right. then you look, you're like, these suck. And right. uh, let me go back yeah. to my NES. Yep. I'm yeah. sorry, Doug. Well, go ahead. the money grab was when it went from the Wii to the Wii, Wii U. U. I love the Wii U. Don't get me wrong, I have it. However, it's a money grab. It should have went from the 
the Wii to the Switch. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, the graphics didn't improve. Nothing really changed with the Wii U except you got the controller. You got the little controller with the, the screen controller on with it. The screen, right. Which I'd never use. I mean, my kids liked it for a while, but. It was it affordable the in the Switch. house. Yeah. So, yeah, that was. It was I can agree with a that. A little frustrating, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And I can say that we probably don't use ours much. Um, like me, I even use my Vita. My Vita is actually in the car. Oh. <laughs> I used to, with the new Gundam game in it, I might have. Nice. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. Nice. Okay, so um, let's go on to our news segment, and we got to hear some of our geek rock star listeners give us some feedback. Yeah. And now, let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. Okay, uh, I asked you. I asked our all our wonderful geek rock star listeners on the Facebook and on the Twitter. Um, eventually, I'm going to get to the Instagram. I promise. Does, if if somebody wants to do it for us, I will pay you five bucks a month. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> wow. Five bucks a month? That you might even do it. Holy that. cow! <laughs> I'm in. It can't be that much work. I mean, come on. That's that's uh, like uh, that's uh. like that's a heck of a lot you could get off the value menu. That's that is. That's like <laughs> it's two. Chicken rollers and a I know <laughs> anyway. <and> a burrito. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to edit that out because I ain't gonna pay you anybody. Uh, <laughs> well, I might talk to me. We'll see. Anyway, so I asked everybody what was your favorite video game, and I'm gonna start with our Twitter stuff. And let's see, we have and I apologize, I'm gonna butcher this one at Nreal Dad Nosu. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Looks good enough to me. Yeah, it's a. Uh, his his response was Wolf Wolfenstein infiltration right. missions or literally shoot at everything that moves ghost zombies Frankenstein project with Nazis and blonde karate women dressed in lingerie that's a pretty good that reason. works right. for me right. yeah uh, from at huh podcast huh? Tempest ah uh, nice vector, game. vector graphics yep. yes yeah. one absolutely. that I considered for my list although it didn't. Actually, make it in the this end. This actually, that was a couple people answered that one. Yep. Uh, let's see. At Nerd and Cheese, and this I, this one I hold near and dear to my heart. WCW N, NWO Revenge on the N64. I tip my hat to you, Nerd and Cheese. I truly do. Yeah, that. Although well, No we'll Mercy was better. Well, uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, let's see. C Dub Vegas C Dub Vegas, which is Mr. Mr. Winchester. Winchester. Hey. Uh EA football in a year between 03 and 09. What is tag Jeek. See you uh, online, what, Winchester. What a, what a surprise. What system? <laughs> Uh, which one does he have? I think he has I think he's 364 uh, an Xbox One? I think he has the Xbox. I'm coming for know. you. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that was kind of frightening. Uh, this <laughs> At True Blies, this guy has been communicating with us a lot. Um, actually, looking forward to meeting up with him. And he said, Pokemon, have to go with a game I grew up on. Played the first one back in 98, and I still pick up the new ones when they release. Not to mention ridiculous numbers of miles I've physically walked since 2016. Nice. Pokemon Go. Yeah. Love it. Nice. Good on you. At Puppy Car 088. Um, Uncharted series is my favorite. Um, yeah, he, they they bought the PS3 just to play that game. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, at Starry Meadows, Final Fantasy VII, my yes. first Final Fantasy game. It engulfed my life before I never realized a video game could tell such a story. I, I never played a Final I've Fantasy. I've never played. Game. I oh. So never I'm going to be one. watching for you on Twitter. I need to know when the remake finally hits. I want to know what you think about it when it gets out. I That's at Starry Meadows. I should I, play. I should play a Final Fantasy. I game. Tr- play Final Fantasy VII because it's there. There's some other good ones, but that that one That'll is just. Get you. It's remarkable okay, cool. i legitimately like put the controller down for a week because of a, a scene that happens in there and i'm like i, I can't i'm done yeah i i, I can't take this right now <laughs> yeah mm. and onto our facebook listener our facebook responders there you go. Yeah. listeners yeah a link to the past is total perfection from gameplay to pacing to graphics to score to story I play it through every every few years since the day it came out, and every time is just as good. Great mm-hmm. game, great, great game. game. Thank you, David. Uh, Jason Parkins, who is another guy that's been 
uh, on our page since the beginning of the show, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Baldur Gate. He, ah. I grew up on Dungeons and Dragons, so yep. having it in such a fantastic and well-written video game was amazing. He is the husband of a woman that I went to school with. Oh, very good. So um, you're the one that brought him in, huh? Uh, probably by proxy, yeah. Nice. nice. Like Carl and myself, he is a type 1 diabetic. Outstanding. But a good guy. Ah. Wow. Just putting it out there. Got me. <laughs> well, right in the knows. heart. Justin Zaleski, Half-Life, all of them, the entire series. Also a big fan of Thief. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the sneak around games. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're going to have to have a talk. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll do that later. Uh, Skeeter Thompson, who's my brother. Uh, Dragon's Lair was so much fun at Chuck E. Cheese and had such a fun and challenging game. Plus, it was a cartoon and just to, just a blast to play. Challenging is an understatement, man. Yeah, that game, hard. wow, crazy. And do you know you can get that on the Wii? You can. Yes. You, you yeah, know, I, I, it's it's, it's awesome. actually, I actually have it. It's a three-pack set that comes with that, Dragon's Lair 2, and, and, and Space, 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 Space. Yep. Oh. But it's, uh, it's authentic. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. You die a lot. A uh, lot. The voice of the show, Todd Harvey, said Pong. <laughs> Just, I think that's, that's about all it is. Stop that's playing it. them too. <laughs> John from California, Doom. Not the original. Uh, not the original from as fun 19, as it from was. From 1993. But the one released in 2016. Oh, my, oh the new one. Okay. Yep. okay. Seriously, my favorite to play with God of War, a very close second. Hmm. Nice. Sean Teller. I wasn't much of a video game player, but I played a few. My favorite coin op was Tempest. Favorite console was Modern Warfare series, and favorite computer game was Star Wars The Old Republic. Ooh, yes. Cool. I can agree. Okay, well, almost through with these. Crystal Midget, and again, last week, I don't know if I said it right. I, I hope I'm saying it right. The updated Pong. Used to play that all the time with my husband when we were dating. They updated Pong? Uh, I guess. Oh, yeah. Everything gets an update. Hmm. Of course. Uh, Fury Di Domin- Di Dominico. And again, you're, you're on all the time. I apologize if I butchered your name, which would be Final Fantasy VII. Excellent. Uh, Brady, I used to I used to play EverQuest with Fury. Good oh, guys. Nice. Yep. Brady Allen Myers, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic, and Mass Effect. All right. Excellent. Lee Monson played Final Fantasy VII. I'm starting to see a trend here. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of Final Fantasy. Uh, Amy Matthews, Pitfall on the Sega Genesis, and Breakout on the Atari. Ha, uh, breakout! What a fun nice. game! Yeah, and Super then, Mario Three. She and says. then the better yeah. sequel, Arkanoid. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, Nicholas Gimboa. He's uh, on the uh, Piecing It Together podcast, by the way. Uh, Fallout New Vegas action RPG for the win, in my book, anyway. <laughs> uh, Tabitha Hilton Di Domenico, which I'm that's the wife of Fury. Wife, yes. Is EverQuest. Yep. Uh, Jesse Arder, our, our fighter friend, is Super Mario World. Nice. And right. finally, Regina Edwards did Legend of Zelda. Yes. And with, with the gold cartridge. I like her. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your feedback. We're going to be doing this more. This is awesome. And on to the main event. Now it's time for the main event. We're doing something a little different. Um, we're putting the coin in it. We're putting the coin in. And, and because we only had four quarters each, we only get four choices today. Very good. So I like that. Well, like we get, that. Are we playing Gauntlet? Because all four of us could play. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Doug nice. needs food badly. <laughs> <laughs> so we, No, actually, I think we're playing like Mario where one of us has to die and then the next one gets to play. Ah, okay, uh, whatever. I was hoping it was like TMNT. All right, Dub, you can be Luigi. That's fine. <laughs> Darn it. Can, I at least, can we play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the X-Men one? That ah, one. Well played. Yes. But you're Dazzler. I'm in. All right. I, All right. I, I get mutant power. All right. What you're, do you want? You're Jubilee. <laughs> Dude, why are you being a jerk? <laughs> well, Jubilee had a crush on Logan. I have a crush on Cal. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it all works. works that <laughs> is gross. <laughs> okay, so our top four today, we're doing... We're gonna Wait, ex- top four? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah, doing... Okay. Ex- we're going to be extended on our number ones, and we're going to... We're calling this a number one and three honorable mentions. I think. Like a geek out. Yeah. We're going to geek out on the number ones. And that is our favorite video games of all time. And because none of us can ever follow instructions, including me, um, a lot of series are 
said here and so on and so forth. Some of us, some of us did our job. I I, d- I did the research and I was I I started to see the trend. Uh, you know that the, these games that we love are series. It, yeah, it's a series. Yeah. There's many of them. Well, it's it's because it's like Star Wars. It's, yeah, would we love Star Wars if it was one? Not as much as we do. Right. Mm. I, there is something about the series about the investment. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's yep. important. I I agree. So I'm going to start with my number four. I'm going to call it number four because it's just easier. Um, and that would be all the THQ wrestling from the N64, starting with WCW, NWO Revenge, and going all the way through WWF No Mercy. In the middle of that was WrestleMania 2000. Yes. Oh, the, the gameplay on that has not been matched. I, I got to say that I actually liked WrestleMania 2000 really? more than I liked... Um, no Mercy, and I can tell you why. Please. No Mercy, the way their storylines were kind of laid out were there, whereas if you played 2000, it was just like a season mode. Yeah. And you could take a character, and you never knew what twists and changes were going to come. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the very interesting one, the first time you beat WrestleMania, you unlock Shawn Michaels. Yeah. So I, it just that one stuck with me better. Now, I like I liked the No Mercy just because, you know, the technology got better. The graphically, it is the graphically better. got better, and I love the creator wrestler mode. That is my favorite. I, I, I'm playing dress up. I know I'm playing. Well, there's creative dress. Up. There's creative yeah, wrestler there mode in 2000. Them. Yeah. Now the only thing I like the revenge, but it didn't have a creator wrestler. No, mode. it did not. And uh, I know it's kind of a cheesy thing, but on when you get them on the ground on um, wrestle on the WWF games, you can put them up. So they're sitting up, so you can do different moves. Oh yeah, that option is not there on the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but the WCW was an early one. It's the, yeah, it's that was earlier. the first one. Yeah, so. and you could do some crazy top mo- oh top top rope stuff. So, it's so much fun. So Black Geek, I, I got a question for you. Uh, oh, yes, he is still <laughs> on my system. So uh, so I rem- I remember that's when we were we were roommates oh. when you got No Mercy and the create a character. And if I if I'm not mistaken, what was your character's name you created? Was it the Black Geek? That'd be amazing if it was. No, <laughs> was it Big Blood? Was it? Yeah, it's Big was Black. A big Black or Big B? Or think it, uh, no, like no. Big Black was mine. Moppy and Man was Matt's. And oh, God, I'm trying to think of the name. Yours is still on there. And his looks like a serial killer. <laughs> he literally <laughs> made... Like God. Like, well, he no, made like, Jason I, Voorhees. I, what, it was oh, like... Oh, yes. You could buy oh, the mask. <laughs> you could buy the mask. And oh, he made his God. guy so powerful that he would just go through and just start kicking us. <laughs> like there was nothing... It was... Like you take Kane... And up him like twenty one levels. Nice. <laughs> to be fair, if I didn't, I would to lose be fair. constantly. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I I am going to put on Twitter later the name of your character because he's <laughs> we still have him. You know, yes. I'm actually going to oh pull the four down to play that tonight. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. man, it's just so many good memories. And again, because you can create yourself. You are the wrestler, and that is something yeah. so cool. I basically was a black stone called Steve Officer. Right, I, remember, yeah. <laughs> I can't was. imagine you doing that. <laughs> Ran out and everything. Well, no, what, what's funny is, is that you know once it once his character came on, he would like reenact his character, come, <laughs> and then he would come down to the couch and be like, "All right, let's let's do it." Like, <laughs> the whole time my character was coming out, I was like, doing the "That's same adorable." Thing. <laughs> Thank you, Doug, for bringing that back to us. Um, I would have to say my number four, it's a Japanese import, if you can get your hands on it. It's called Another Century Episode, or Ace for short. Okay. Um, one of the reasons I love this so much, and we don't get it out here in the Western, is due to licensing. It's a game that incorporates multiple mechs from multiple animes um, and brings it into a story. Most of them have, it, you know, it's a colliding story for why they got to be there, and at the end they go back to their own universe. But this particular game is actually um, the fourth one, um, Ace R. Mm-hmm. It opened me up to so many animes I didn't because I went and researched the animes um, to see one of which, not to take up a whole lot of time, would have been Full Metal Panic. Mm. Um, Tessa is speaking, and since I don't mm-hmm. speak Spanish, it kind of sounds like she's the damsel in distress the whole time until you actually go back and watch the anime and realize, no, she's not the damsel. She's barking orders at yeah. you. So um, that would be my number four. Nice. Oh, nice. Uh, so my number four is the almighty Mega Man. 
Very good. Mm, Came out in 87 through Capcom and the Blue Bomber, just with all the... In Japan, they actually called him Rockman because <laughs> the kind of the series was, you know, rock, Rockman. paper, scissors, you know, rock. And so, yeah, fire, ice, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, especially like Mega Man 1 was great, but Mega Man 2 just really solidified the genre. And it's, what, got like 30 different games now. Nice, nice. Yeah. For uh, the crowd to know, I actually cannot and have not ever beaten a Mega Man game. Really? Oh. Mm. Yeah. It's actually one of the games that is... For whatever reason, I've never beaten my number one choice. We'll get to that later. Mm. Oh wow! Ever. All right. So as a child, the Williams Company the uh, Williams. put out put out the first series of games that actually raised my blood pressure. You know, they put out Defender and Stargate and um, Robo Robotron. Robotron. And st- so those real stressful games that. Um, you know, raise your childhood blood pressure. So the the one that did it more than anything and when the most fun one for me was Sinistar. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. So very simple game. You fly the ship, you bite onto the asteroids while the red things are trying to steal the Cinnabom crystals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to collect those so you can make Cinnabombs because the Sinistar monster is trying to do that at the same time. Now that would be fine if not for those stupid little round ships that oh. could fire at you. Um, I like to point out that he but, started this by saying the simple game. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but well, no simple concept. <laughs> oh, not a simple, not a simple game. Very <laughs> hard game. But the Sinistar I've never was... I've never gotten beyond four Sinistars. Wow. Yeah, but the um, Sinistar monster that that thing was scary. It was like it literally laughed had nightmares, and, and then it laughed at you. Yeah, and belittled you. That's it. I and hunger de- and degraded you, coward. Run, run, run coward. <laughs> I mean, it called you names. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and laughed at you, and, and then when it finally, why would you play this? Best it game ever. You, yeah, when it finally catches you, it's like it roars and then it chomps. It does you, roar, and then you, and then you might miss you the first time. Right. So you could get that last bomb. Okay, it, it, because there's no better feeling than when you actually do beat the Sinistar. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I have Multiple it, birds. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, my number three will be the Forza series, especially Horizon. Um, I love racing games. I love being able to create my car, and I like the... Um, just being able to edit everything, tune everything, put in different parts, lower it, raise it, do whatever. And especially with Horizon stuff, it's open world, so you can go do whatever you want. And the the um, I like the uh, physics in it and everything. It's just beautifully mastered. It looks incredible. I, I agree. Like, well, you're the one who got me into mm-hmm. Forza Horizon. Like each each one of them is like a different city with different different, different terrains, country, yeah. and different countries like Australia, Italy, France. Uh, I England's think the, the, the new one, the new one's like England and Scotland now. So it's yeah, yeah, just gorgeous sceneries. Oh my gosh! And if and if you're if you play me, there's I got all sorts of iHeartGeek uh, graphics that you can I you will never, never free. play. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I, I'll even send it to you. That's I'll a good friend. Look, look, look <laughs> iHeartGeek, there are graphics you can download for free. There you go. Wow. Yeah, yeah the heart that you made is on there. Ah, oh. nice. Uh, mine would my next one would be needs no real explanation on what it is, is the Batman Arkham series. Oh, oh yes, yeah. such a good game. If you haven't played them, only thing I don't like about them is the car. I don't like. The I, car agree. I, yes. I, I, 100% I agree. I a hundred percent agree. Rid of that, I would I would I would still be playing it. No, I, I hate the car stuff. I can agree with you on that. I. It was shoehorned in. There's no doubt about it. And you're not actually driving a car. Yeah. It's a tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, you just have it on tank mode the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. It takes forever. Okay, make the triangle. I'm like, stop. Just yeah, let or, me go beat up Or people. when you got to chase people from behind. When you got to get the stupid. people from behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But aside from that, removing yeah. that story base oh, and everything I, I else, gameplay, it was a Conroy, game changer. Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my number two, or three. My number, my number three is the Castlevania series. All of them, yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, Simon, Simon Belmont going to the castle, kill Dracula, you know, monsters, werewolves, uh, all sorts of good stuff. Groovy. Nice. My number three, uh, when I worked at Pistol Pete's Pizza, one of the benefits was that um, when he closed and was counting the money, he let us go play in the arcade for free. Mm-hmm. You could grab oh, a whole wow. bag of tokens and just play, play, play. So one of the first story side scroller games I ever won was Black Tiger. Okay. Nice. Um, and, wow. I, and I spent, um, you know, probably a week learning that game to where I could win it, and um, it was just a lot of fun. Um, you know, you you 
go through the thing. You have armor. You improve your armor, your weapon. You fight the monsters. You fight the bosses. Mm -hmm. And you rescue the damsel at the end, fight the dragon. I think I'm going to try that tonight. Just actually. a really cool game. Yes. Um, and I have like a couple versions of it now on the some of the consoles that I have now. And still fun. Totally. Should we Hard call, to. Should we call you Jason Halliday then? <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I'll just leave it at that. Yep. <laughs> okay, my number two. Um, is the Fable series in this order three, one, and two? Wow! Um, like Star Wars, <laughs> you were dedicated. I I have put at least a minimum of a hundred hours into each one of those. Games. I can wow. guess. I love those games. Did I you do multiple, both? Huh? Did you do Did you do good side and then yep. you go to the bad side? I, and I do a middle. I like the middle ones. Okay. I want to play those because I like Skyrim and I know that they're similar. It's similar. similar. There's something that's just better. I honestly, the graphics are better on the Skyrim. However, I'll take Fable any day of the week. Cool. I, I'm too intimidated to play it. It's really? Just, I think it would yeah. suck your world up, but it's exactly. fantastic. It's, I mean, it's there's so many things you can do, and it's the game like Minecraft is whatever you want to make it. Right. Yes, there's a storyline, but you can go and do side quests for yeah ever days. <laughs> yeah, literally, and you could never do the the main mission and still. Have a blast with it! Wow, yeah, yeah. That's what's stopping me from playing that too. Is I don't, I don't think I'd come out of the house. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm worried that I. I would, think, yeah. you'd, I think you just play through the story mode once. <laughs> One if of you go days. through, uh, don't do any of the side stuff, and then you'll go from there. Yeah, interesting. Um, my number two, it is a single game, it's not a series, would be the Death and Return of Superman from the um, SNES. It, it's because you love Superman. Well, in it's a aside very from weird right. way. I do, but it's <laughs> it's one of the few games that actually followed a perfect storyline from the um, comic books. There was very little cuts out of it. So nice. Did you get to play like the Eradicator? And, yes, you play as Cyber all. Superman? You play as all. What, of them. Uh, what system is that on? Super Nintendo. And oh, I think a, I have that. You do if you have the emulator. Yeah, yeah. It's on there. It's death. I have the hundred and two and one games. Yep, I bet it's I have death it on and that. return. Okay, of Superman. Cool. So, Play through it. It is ridiculously fun. Nice. nice. Uh, my number two, no question, Final Fantasy series. I would say... That didn't make your number one? No. Because you are into that game. Now, I love Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy 2 is the first one that I got hooked on where it's there's some confusion. It's Final Fantasy 4 in Japan. It's Final Fantasy 2 here. Oh, yeah, but, that's right. Yeah, and then three, six, uh, Final Fantasy 3 was 6 there, blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows that. Uh, but that was the one <laughs> Everybody. That, yeah, you, yeah. If you don't know that, yeah, what's wrong you, with you? If you don't know that, <laughs> you've lost cool points. Um, but, but I don't it was, care if you don't know. But it was, my first, it was my first RPG that I ever played where, like, and it was Cecil. You, you played as a bad guy, basically, that went on to a road of redemption, almost kind of like Jamie Lannister where you you become like now a white knight at the very end and then you find out you know who the main bad guy is and I'll just I'll leave it at that because I don't want to spoil it even though it's a 30 year old game uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah it, it really got me hooked into RPGs and I've and I haven't put it down since sweet um, Pistol Pete's Unlimited Tokens <laughs> Arcade um, <laughs> ching, 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 ching. Well, there was a game. Uh, the first one I played was Matt Mania, but the sequel to Matt Mania, Mania mm. Challenge. Yeah. Um, wrestling game. Mm -hmm. um, generic characters. But I loved the move set and I loved the graphics for the time. They were yeah. smooth and you could do clotheslines and you could do cool looking body slams and suplexes over the rope and jumps and knee drops and all that. And then Mania Challenge, they expanded the move set, running drop kicks and all these sorts of things. Um, and the reason that I bought my Xbox emulator was because that game both of them matt mania and mania challenge were on it yeah. and how does it feel when you play them now same i love cool. them mm -hmm. yeah they're fun awesome. um bringing back the nostalgia and i still love the way that they look i mean for the games of the time they're not as graphically cool as like the later n64 stuff and all that but for what they, they still, are they still look good yeah they look great they look crisp actually yes i could yeah very crisp nice Okay, so on to our number ones, which are, like, heavily researched. <clears throat> My number one would be one Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. <laughs> uh, okay, so the, kind of the background on Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, before I get to why I just love it. <laughs> uh, designers were Kazu y Yonimala. Yeah, I, I'll never meet you, Give so me I that. apologize. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here. <laughs> 
because <laughs> somebody oh did all our research for our number ones. <laughs> yeah, me. Hooray. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, the designers were uh, Kazuo Yoniyama and uh, Mayumi uh, Hirota were the, were the creators of the game. Groovy. Okay, it's from 1987. It was on the NES, and this was the first game. I can say this is the first video game I ever fell in love with. Okay. Um, just pl- and I was playing it at, for the first time. I played it at JC Penney's when they had the little uh, electronics set up around Christmas, mm-hmm. and that's the game I played. And I'm like, and I started on Soda Popinski because I'm like, oh, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> How did that even happen? Huh? How did that well, happen? It was because a bunch of other kids were playing. I love them. They just walked go, up. So, yeah. <laughs> That's messed Dude, up. Hey, I want to play. Oh, my God. I'm getting my butt kicked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this is kind of interesting. Um, Tyson got paid 50000 for a three-year period for his likeness. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got out of that at just the right time. <laughs> well, it's it wasn't because like a lot of people think because of what happened but it was, tru- it was it just because his, his contract ran out. That's all yeah, it was. And then he was replaced by Mr. Dream, which was stupid because it looked just like him. Right. Um, I liked Super Macho Man better. I wish they would add him as. The I one. actually refuse to play anyone that's not my Tyson one. No, oh, fair enough. It, right. I just don't. Yeah, the other uh, ones. No, I have my no, Wii, and that's yeah. why I still play the Wii. Uh, I have Super. Oh, I'm sorry. I do play the Wii yeah. version. Yeah. yeah, right. Did you play? Have you played the new version? Yeah, the new yeah, Wii I version. Love it just yeah. as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I have Super, but I don't think I have Mike Tyson. Oh. I might somewhere. Well, yeah. uh, just, oh, yes, the, just Carl Stone. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you have Punch Out, yeah. it's the same thing. Uh, let's see. Tyson was replaced by Mr. Ram. Said that 14 boxers, three divisions, um, three minors. Which, if you can't pass those, just stop gaming ever uh four major and six world when you hit the world that's when it starts getting hard right mm. yeah but the best part is if you know the patterns yeah you know, right every 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 pad every boxer is just a different way of beating him it's yeah. not skill it's just learning i remember learning oh, the no, pad, that's being, skill. being yeah. happy when you learn the pattern remember when piston honda used to like uh, like flicker yep. his eyebrows <laughs> yep. and when they, when, uh, i mean you know what i mean i don't know how they got away with even remaking it because let's be honest this it's a little racially biased i guess you yeah think <laughs> yeah yeah but you got the german guy the french guy you know, yeah. the italian guy honestly again this came out it's and diverse nobody cared, right <laughs> yeah. diverse the french guy was the worst <laughs> the, where in the heck glass joe come from <clears throat> uh he came from mario no, just question no it's just question marks, question marks? yeah okay. it does not say you like bananas <laughs> Does he? Uh, Does yeah. it say that? Yes. I know that where he's from is question marks. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, every one of these characters is fun. Uh, Mario was the ref, which yeah, great to have that. Um, he has a lot of skills. And he actually talks to you. Like, meow, meow, meow. And I've never <laughs> beat the game. You did? Oh, oh, wow. I've never beat it. I know I'm terrible. And I know there's ways to do it. I just... I refuse to... Oh. I won't look up cheats on it or anything else. I it's, love the game. It's just the pattern. I, I will cheated, still play yeah. the game to this day. Even to, even Tyson. If you can get through like the first, I think what was it like thirty or sixty seconds of Tyson, you can beat him. You're good. Like in you real ju- life, you just you just have to you just <laughs> have to get out of his his uppercut. That's all. Yeah, it's, it's just I love that game. I played it last week. I played at least once every other week. I love that game. Did you see when Mike Tyson actually played it like a couple? Yeah, of months and we ago? got just. <laughs> I think he lost to Glass Joe. What? Well, no, no. They, they, they put him up again. He was Little Mac, and he was actually playing himself. Oh, okay. And then he did the episode. He was like, "Oh, oh I'm okay. done." So <laughs> that's how that feels. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, my number one is. Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriot. Mm-hmm. Came out in 2008, um, released by Konami. Action, it's an action-adventure stealth game. Hito Kajumi, Kajami, I pronounced that wrong. It was the creator. Kajumi, yeah. Was the creator. It received a perfect review and game of the year for several gaming from, uh, publications. Um Kajami came back to co-direct uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, because of the negative fan feedback and the death threats on the other director. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, I do remember that. Um, it had a U.S. budget of between 50 to $70 million to make. Uh, that's the research that wonderful Kaj put into it. Yeah. Uh, uh, with Wikipedia. A little bit, a little bit. Thank you, Wikipedia, for all the knowledge that I found out on, these, on this information. <laughs> uh, my love for the game comes from the fact that, um, unfortunately, and spoiler to anyone, you cannot just jump into this game. 
Um, you will get some history with it, but you got to go through and play not the Metal Gear Solid series, the Metal Gear series itself, starting all the way back on the actual Nintendo. Like the actual beginning one? Okay. It, you can play them out of order. You can play them how you want to, but the reason why I love the fourth one above all of them, it is a perfect wrap-up accumulation of a story, of a long story arc, and you get complete closure. I mean, they've released two games since then, um, which is neither here nor there with it, but if you want a game that gives you a wrap-up and a closure to a storyline, it is the perfect run for it. So, um, it's been trophy-enabled since, so it started off. I actually purchased a machine for it. That's oh, really? why I bought. I waited and bought my PS3 as the Metal Gear Solid PS3 um, on it. In it, like I said, um, watch gameplay if you want to. It is a stunning visual game. The story is gripping, and uh, and there's just not much more I can really say on that line. Cool, excellent. All right, so my number one, ladies and gentlemen, this is for you, Regina. Is the Legend of Zelda. The first one, <laughs> the first one. like, well, the link to the past. The I gold, I, co- the I, gold cartridge one, the gold cartridge one. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Or the or the rare uh, uh, gray cartridge one. Doesn't matter to me. But <laughs> this this game, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, who did Super Mario Brothers and and Donkey Kong, like came out with another. I came out with another game that was an expansive world that you can do. You can go wherever you want. It was an open world. You can go wherever you want to. There was difficulty in in different sections, but and in back in that time, you didn't unless you had like a Nintendo Power. You didn't you know didn't where know to where, go unless you were mapping it. Unless you were actually drawing it out and making a map, you didn't know where you were going, hmm. and you couldn't. You couldn't. And all of a sudden, then, like you, you'd get you get the candle, and then you would like throw it out on a bush, and all of a sudden, a door opened. You're like, oh my god, what's in here? And then some troll would be like, here's some money for you. You're like, wow, that's amazing. It just. Even even in today's standards, the the amount of things that you can do, the amount of freedom that you had in that That's game is just ro- is oh. remarkable. And people speed run it to this day, like not even do, getting the the most powerful sword or the most powerful weapon. They oh yeah, they bombs and boomerangs and they stuff. and they kill Ganon. It's crazy, and and it led to now another thirty year venture with the Breath of the Wild just coming out or, or recent, the most recent one, which is visually stunning, and it's. St- and it's still just a good game. It's just mm-hmm. a good adventure game. I love it. Mm. I can tell you who made a lot of money off of me and my friends during that time frame. Whoever it was that made graph paper, because mm-hmm. we would sit on the I, no kidding, we would sit on the playground with graph paper, lining out the maps that we had, mm-hmm. trying to figure out who figured out uh, what and got what. And this is why you're on the show now. A <laughs> um, couple of fun facts before I turn it over to PB. Um, that was the first game, that was the first cartridge that actually had a backup battery so that you could save your game. Ah. Oh. And and to this day, like some of those batteries are still running. Like there's, you can, there's a way that you can switch out the battery, but for most of them, for a good chunk of the cartridges, those batteries still work even to this hmm. day. Um, and then also, which I... I thought I do, but maybe I just forgot. There's a second quest that you can go on to, uh, on Zelda, where after you beat the beat it the first time, it will make it harder. the the uh, The creatures are harder, and the, where things are is different. They've they've randomized it, so it makes it. Yeah, I'll never go places. through that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah, I've already be, I've already beat them once. I don't want to do it. Again. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> okay, so um, my number one is the Street Fighter Two. Super Street Fighter 2 whole series of games and how it evolved over time. Uh, it began uh, in the arcade version in 1991 and the Super NES version in 1992. Uh, it's a side-scroller fighting game. It's kind of the coming off of games before it, like Karate Champ and things like that, and then it kind of set the trend for the Mortal Kombats and mm-hmm. things after it. Mm-hmm. The um, combos. Yes, for the combos and the button moves. Uh, it was created by Takashi Nishiyama and Hiroshi Matsumoto. Those Japanese guys know how to make fighting games, oh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. Started with eight playable characters. That mm-hmm. would be Ryu. Um, <laughs> look at him, look at me. That's I know, it's, it's Ryu. 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 So Ryu. 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 It's Ryu. <laughs> okay, so the eight playable characters. Right. Ryu and Ken. Yep. Chun Li and Honda. Yep. Okay. Guile Chun-Li. and awesome. Dalsim. Yep. Okay. Zangief and Blanca. Right. Perfect. So those are the eight 
Carlos original playable White. characters. <laughs> um, you would fight. <laughs> You could fight opponents, uh, and if you played the computer game, you went through the story, right? Where you went around the world, flying to different places to battle, um, which eventually led you to the bosses of. Oh, his name is escaping me. Balrog would Balrog? be the first Balrog, one. Balrog, Balrog, um, Vega, Vega, Sagat, Sagat, and Sagat. Bison. Mm-hmm. M. Bison. M. Bison. M. Bison. Um, in Not Japan, <laughs> it was a little different. Bison was Vega. In Japan, mm-hmm. uh, Vega was Balrog in Japan, and Balrog was Bison in Japan. Vega was the do coolest we, looking character. Do we yeah. know why they changed the name? Did, I, were you able to dig that much? No, out? no. I, I would. I think I've heard, I think I heard something about it, like a rumor about that. That they just thought that M Bison was more was a more of a menacing, like 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 lead villain. They should have made him Zangief. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> guys, he's the most hulking guy in the game. That's yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> a thought. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anyway, to um, <laughs> it went it went through a lot of series and it upgraded to where um, the my personal favorite Street Fighter game is the New Challengers, mm-hmm. okay. where they brought in Fei Long, who was kind of a Bruce Lee, hey, right. right, and uh, T Hawk. Right. Yeah. Uh, big, big Native American. I'm starting to wonder about the racism in this game. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. This is the and new then, Mike Tyson punch and out. Cammy, who was like an English, I remember her, an English oh, yeah. guile, I, female guile. Right. Right. She, I think in, I think she was a, she was Secret Service. She was like British, yeah, British intelligence, British intelligence, right. intelligence yeah. yeah. Uh, so new moves and all that, and then they had, of course, turbo and hyper fighting and all mm-hmm. that. Um, Forget yeah, about say, DJ. <laughs> oh yeah, DJ. <laughs> so you oh. said right, DJ. Right, he was one of the new characters too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if you set on the Super NES, where I've mostly where I've played it, <clears throat> you set the difficulty level, then you get the endings, oh, that's which right, was like right. one of the most sought after things. You know, you get all the way through Bison, and you get to see the characters' endings, be it the. Uh, you know, the good guy endings or the bad guy endings. I forgot that you didn't see them if you didn't have the level. If you don't have the difficulty level at least midway, I forgot you, about you won't that. see the endings. Mm. It just I says, thank anything. you for playing, huh? Right, exactly. So <laughs> I, have, I have personally played all the characters. I've gotten through all the ones. Because you can play on the uh, the new challenge. You can play Bison. You can play right, the right. bad guy bosses, yep. too. Um, it's just endured, and it's, you know, the Alpha series spawned off of it. Um I just recently purchased uh, the anthology again, the Alpha anthology, um, just trying to go back through. I mean, it's so frustrating still because those button moves, you know them, you love them, but you can't always execute them. Uh, Mm. And it's just, it's like golf. You never master it. You just... Do your best. Oh, as a kid, I only, unfortunately, could use Chung Li because her move required you to just press the just button, the button repeatedly. repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Han does that way too. That's why he's my favorite. Yeah. He's got the easiest moves to get that fist going and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's um, holds up. You know, I mean, I know that fighting games have advanced far beyond that, but. PB, as completely. a game player, I want to tip my hat to you because that is the most excellent choice oh, thank I've you. ever heard. I, I I agree. Well, now I have since you're such a Street Fighter to aficionado, I do want to throw out one question. I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. So, one character that you didn't I mention was Akuma or Akuma, like yeah, from from Alpha. Or uh, from yeah, three. Well, I, th- I from, think it was. No, I think it was Super Street Fighter as well. Makes, too, um, right? Yeah, he makes it in three. Street Fighter three. No zero. Oh, zero? Street Fighter 2 Zero. Um, his first appearance is on, I believe the PlayStation had a copy of it, but um, I know that I had it on the Saturn, the one you love so much. Yeah. It was a collector's set. It came with two discs, and that was his first appearance. Okay. If you are, if you remember putting in the game, you know the little preview that comes up with it shows Ryu flashing. And it'll <coughs> show like a bunch of the cast coming and it keeps flashing the Ryu right. before he does Aduke it. And one of the quick flashes you'll see will be Akuma. The oh, games nice. I have on the Alpha Anthology, where you have a bunch of new characters actually. Oh, God, yeah. Um, is the first time I've seen Akuma. Mm-hmm. So I haven't played him yet, but okay. I but I took oh. I took Ryu through the Alpha 2 okay. to see the ending. And it's and, where he's in the water, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So, yep. so, yeah, yeah. so put this in the back of your mind since you haven't really played uh, uh, Akuma. Um, do you think that he's Ryu's father? No. Mm. You don't think he's Ryu's father? I do father? not, no. No. Not even... Because uncle? they've established him as Goki's <laughs> not brother. Not everything is Star Wars, oh, guys. Okay. Huh? <laughs> he's, because of how they established him as Goki's brother, mm. um, 
I don't believe that he's reused father. I believe he may be related okay. or an ancestor or something, but I think that they established somewhere along the way that he's walked the earth a lot longer than we know. Okay. All right. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So, yeah. So, Alpha is like a new a new discovery for me. He wasn't in the older Street Fighter oh, game, so love that's Alpha. what I'm more familiar yeah. with. But, yeah. So, the Alpha It's series. so flashy. You're going to love it. Just, um, are you, do you hinge to the storylines yes. of the game? Just know that Alpha is an alternate universe storyline. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hadouken! Okay, that's a show. Um, check out the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the com. We paid extra for it. Uh, go to the Facebook. Talk to us. Answer uh, what our next top five is going to be. Go to the Twitter. Do the same thing, at iheartgeekshow. Um, until next time, I'm Dub. I'm the Black Geek Carl. I'm Kaj. I'm Ryu. <laughs> Hadouken! Keep, Keep on, on geeking, geeking on. on. Game Hadouken. over. You've been listening to iHeartGeek. Our Twitter account is at iHeartGeekShow. Hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs>